This year I managed to hit my goal of hitting 100 plats and I couldn't be happier with the game I chose for the milestone. When we saw Guardians of the Galaxy at E3 2021, a lot of people weren't sure about it. We were worried that the cast would just be the discount version of the MCU Guardians, and we were also worried about the fact that you could only control Star-Lord and not the entire team. However, Eidos Montreal, a fantastic studio, was at the helm and they were focusing on a single player crafted story rather than taking the Marvel's Avengers route. There is evidence that this Guardians game was going to have a multiplayer component, but it was cancelled early on in development. The other thing that showed confidence is the fact that IOS was working very closely with the Marvel writing team. So many people dismissed the game and others were hopeful. And then the game previewed well prior to release. Okay, okay, so that caught people's ears. And then the game was released to mass acclaim. It's being heralded as the most underrated game of 2021 and a surprise game of the year for a lot of people. With all that being said about the game, I decided to grab it and slot it in the queue of games I wanted to get the Platinum Trophy for. I saved it for the 100 mark because I didn't really have another game in mind to honor the milestone, but it made sense because I'm a huge Marvel fan. And I don't regret it. Despite some shenanigans with collectibles, Guardians of the Galaxy is a great platinum run. But I could have spent way less time during the trophy cleanup process knowing what I know now especially when it comes to a missable trophy where you have to pay a fine to the Nova Corp. We're going to cover that part, the collectibles, trophies, and everything else in this video. Frankie says, relax, because I've got you covered for this Platinum Jump to light speed. This is Platinum Hunters, the show where we take a look at everything it takes to get the Platinum Trophy and whether it's worth the effort to achieve it. Welcome to the 2022 era. Of Platinum Hunters got tons and tons of guides planned already for this year. If you want to check out anything I've done prior to this year, definitely check out the playlist that has all my guides we've covered so far. This is episode 41, so there's 40 episodes that you can check out, and you might just find your next Platinum Trophy. The whole Platinum run for Guardians of the Galaxy can be done in one playthrough of the game if you are careful, and I mean a big if. Patches have certainly helped to make some collectibles much easier and less missable, but you still have to pay the fine, and that is missable based on certain decisions you make in the story. The rest of the Platinum run is story based trophies and combat related trophies with a few miscellaneous trophies sprinkled in. You can play the game on any difficulty you like and even create a custom difficulty suited to how you want to play the game. Accessibility options in games are really starting to ramp up and it's pretty exciting to see this in a game. You can play this game on both the PS4 and PS5 and there is a save file migration option to transfer from PS4 to PS5 which will auto pop the PS5 Platinum. Two plats for the price of one. The last thing I'll mention before we jump right into the guide is that there are more resources in the description below to assist you, especially with the collectibles. Let's huddle up Guardians and start with the unmissable story trophies which here in the Platinum Hunters Galaxy we don't reveal the trophy names to avoid spoilers. When I first saw that this game had 58 trophies not including the plat, I thought damn boy that's a lot. But in reality there are not that many to worry about because 30 of those 58 trophies are unmissable. They all lead to unlocking the Guardians of the Galaxy trophy when you finish the story. Very fitting. There is chapter select available for cleanup process after that, so you can for the most part sit back, 
enjoy this awesomely crafted story about the misadventures of this motley crew. I say for the most part because there are collectible trophies to worry about. Pre-patch, for some reason, chapter select doesn't carry over your previous obtained outfits as it reverts your save back to when you started the chapter. I thought maybe this was an oversight by the devs and that it would be fixed with a patch and luckily it was. I missed one of Star-Lord's outfits in nowhere in chapter 6 so I decided screw it I'm gonna go try chapter select and grab it. Lo and behold all my outfits carried over and I was able to complete the collection and get the trophy. However when I tried to do this with items and archives it didn't work. I bought a plushie in nowhere through chapter select and then I continued my current file and it didn't work. Now what does work 100% is that collectibles will carry over to new game plus. This is mildly helpful but still not as good as jumping right into a chapter and grabbing the collectibles you want. So if you didn't collect them all in your first run you will have to play through the game again. Check in the description below to see if there's any updates. But as of the recording in this video, New Games Plus is the best way to go back and get what you've missed. For all the collectible trophies we're about to mention, I have a guide down below in the description that will help you find everything. The most important collectible trophy you need to worry about is called Lore Hoarder. The description of the trophy is interesting and says, quote, Collect 65% of all Galactic Compendium entries for each category, end quote. 65% is an odd number, but honestly, the devs are doing you a favor. It's good that it's not 100%, because some of these collectibles are easily missable due to the linear nature of the game. Plus, it has to be 65% in each category, so you have to be attentive while you're playing the game. These categories can be found when you pull up the menu and go to the Galactic Compendium tab. The factions and locations categories will fill themselves out as you finish the game and so will the characters category as long as you look at all the character profiles on Corel's computer in chapter 7. It's a part of the story so you will know it when you see it but make sure you take the time to look through every entry. So the ones you have to worry about are the enemy scans, archives and item collectibles. Using your visor, make sure you scan every new enemy you encounter, including the bosses, and that will take care of the enemy scans category. The archives are these very small orbs that don't get highlighted on your visor. For these, you will need to find 34 of the 45 archives, and they are found in almost every chapter. The last category is the item collectibles, and this includes the guardians collectibles that are also important for their own separate trophies. The regular items and guardian items are mixed together in the category and there is a distinct difference between them. These guardians collectibles will be specific to the five guardians and will appear in their sleeping quarters on the Milano when you collect them. They open up some awesome and deep conversations with each of the guardians and really do an amazing job of fleshing out each character. So on top of getting 65% of the things found in this category, you will also need to find 50% of the Guardian collectibles to get the Thoughtful Captain trophy. Just like the archives, the Guardian collectibles won't appear on the visor and are hidden on side paths and sneaky spots along the way. Lastly, if you didn't manage to get the trophy while aiming for the 50% mark, you'll have to find a few more for the trophy Managerial Skills which unlocks when you find all Guardian collectibles for any one of the five Guardians. It could be any member of the Ragtag group, including Star-Lord, and this just requires you to find three for one of the members. Now, one of the places you'll find a ton of these items and Guardian collectibles is when you arrive on Nowhere in Chapter 6. Just be cognizant of how many units you are spending when you are buying these items as you'll need a certain number of units to pay the fine for a trophy we are going to talk about later on. This explanation of all these collectibles got pretty complicated but at least they didn't expect you to collect 100% of all the categories and that's a good thing because apparently it takes 3 playthroughs to do that. However, we are not done yet. There is one more collectible type that gets you trophies and you will have to get all 100% of them. You will find these purple boxes that will give you an outfit for one of the crew members. So for the trophy, Fashion Passion, 
you will have to scour the galaxy looking for all these outfits and then equip each one at least once. There is a total of 45 outfits in total. Some of them are given to you as part of the story, like a lot of Star-Lord's outfits, but the rest come from these purple boxes that yet again don't appear on your visor. You will also get the Like a Glove trophy when you find your first outfit. Essentially, just make sure you use a good guide for on your first and second playthrough and you will pretty much safely get all of these collectible trophies. What's cool about combat in this game is that it's encounter based and works a lot like Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy 7 Remake. During these fights against waves of enemies there are a bunch of trophies you can pop by using your host of team based abilities or interacting with your team at the very right moment. First there's the trophy, the crowd goes wild for pulling off 10 flare attacks. When certain enemies, usually the beefier ones are low on health, you will get the prompt to press the triangle and circle buttons to pull off the flare attack. Press those two buttons and the guardians will team up to finish off the enemy. You just need to pull off 10 of these which you will get very early into your galactic journey. Flare attacks are also great for helping you build your momentum meter to the max rank of Marvelous during a fight. For the trophy Unstoppable Force, you will need to build up the Guardian's momentum to Marvelous 10 times. With the sheer amount of fights you will participate in, this trophy is like Thanos. It's all but inevitable. Then there are four auto combo trophies, one for each of your Guardian teammates. They are on screen now for your records. For these trophies, all you have to do is mash the melee button near one of the Guardians and wait for them to come in and assist the combo. That's what I call a tag team. They will just insert themselves into the combo on their own when they are close enough. So that makes Rocket's auto combo the toughest to pull off. Gamora, Drax and Groot are all melee fighters and will naturally stay closer to enemies. But Rocket's game plan is to take them out from afar in an advantageous spot. So the aim assist trophy is going to come down to timing and luck. What you can do is stand beside Rocket and pull one of the enemies towards you with the wind element. Then you have to initiate the combo before Rocket moves his position. Don't stress this one too much as I got it on my first playthrough. You will get the trophy easily along with the other ones. Two other easy inevitable trophies are Pick Me Up and Stagger Swagger. Pick Me Up will pop when you revive one of the guardians that have fallen in combat. All you have to do is hold the triangle button beside your fallen comrade and that will get you this one. Staggering opponents for the Stagger Swagger trophy are also easy as long as you use abilities that contribute to an enemy's stagger bar. If the ability has a white circle beside it when you pull up the ability wheel, it will be an ability that will apply stagger so long as the enemy has a stagger bar. Some of the smaller grunt type enemies don't have one. For this trophy you need to do this 25 times which will quickly rack up. Now speaking of abilities, there are a ton of ability based trophies to get here. Each of the guardians has their own awesome combat moves that serve a special purpose. We are going to have to unlock them first so we can get the dynamic team trophy when we purchase our first ability from any of the team members other than Star Lord. You need to purchase each ability using ability points that are accrued after you max out your experience bar after fights. Each guardian has 4 abilities and you need to unlock all 20 of them to get the fully loaded trophy. Using the ability points I mentioned earlier, you will need to unlock the first, second and third ability spending 1, 2 or 3 points respectively. The fourth ability for each guardian is unlocked at various points in the story past chapter 10, so you won't be able to collect this trophy till closer to the end of the game. These next two ability trophies are for Star Lord and his second and third abilities. His second ability called Fan the Hammer is what you need to get the Bullet Hell trophy for blasting 15 enemies. Use this stream of bullets to gun down those 15 enemies and they don't have to be all at once unlike our next trophy. The trophy Altitude Adjustment has to be done in one shot and you will need to use Star-Lord's Eye of the Hurricane ability to defeat 5 enemies at once. 
This can be tricky as the ability does good damage, but sometimes not enough to take out all the enemies below you. You might have to weaken them first before popping the ability, and the more weak grunts, the better. When you take out 5 in one go, you'll get the trophy. Now let's take a look at the ultimate ability trophies for each guardian. The ultimate assassin Gamora is first with the trained to perfection trophy, where you need to use her executioner ultimate to defeat 10 enemies. This one is easy as Gamora is a single target DPS fiend that can get 10 kills easily after you use it 10 times. Drax is up next and the adding injury to insult trophy for also defeating 10 enemies with his ultimate called Wrath of Katath. Now this ability works differently as Drax will grab an opponent and immobilize the enemy for you and your teammates will have a chance to blast the shit out of them. The kill will count whether Drax or any other guardian gets the kill so you just need to use Wrath of Katath 10 times essentially and just make sure that the enemy falls when he's using it. Rocket's about to pop off with the ulti and get the Boom Show trophy for his 5 barrel barrage ability. Rocket just arms up and goes ham on these enemies and it's wild and unfocused but he mows people down. You'll need Rocket to take out 20 enemies with this barrage and it's going to take a few of these to get the trophy. If you unleash it on a large group of enemies, you'll get the trophy faster. And now it's time for our resident team healer Groot and the Herbal Remedy Trophy. Groot's Gift of the Flore will heal your team when you take damage and the trophy requires you to heal any of your teammates 10 times. The trophy goes by fast because there are 4 other guardians to heal or revive, so you just need to use it 3 or 4 times and the trophy will come to you quickly. These next four trophies all work very similarly to each other, but mix up required guardians and the circumstances. We will use this first trophy as an example, and then the others will make sense. For the trophy, Slake Buster, you will need to wait for the triangle button prompt to pop up while you're fighting the two Slake Beasts in Chapter 3. And then Drax has the chance to answer the call to action and perform the attack. It is kind of random as to which guardian will answer the call to action when the triangle button pops up, but it also has something to do with which guardian is closest to the beast. Plus the triangle button prompt is random itself, but mostly happens when the beast's health bar is low. So these trophies pretty much will pop up randomly when you are fighting these particular enemies. And it can be a bit frustrating for some of these trophies when you're aiming to have certain circumstances happen. The next one is called Drax the Dismemberer, which also requires Drax to answer the call to action when fighting these Starman looking MFers called Inquisitors. The first one makes its appearance in Chapter 7, but more of them challenge you later in the game. For some reason I had a hell of a time getting Drax to answer the call to action as it was always Gamora and sometimes Groot doing it when the triangle button prompt came up. I actually needed to have Gamora and Groot faint first to get Drax to do the attack. Also in chapter 7 you can get the No Way Novacort trophy for having Gamora answer the call to action against a Novacort Centurion. I got this one very easily as she was right there beside the Centurion when the prompt appeared. There are also more Centurions later in the campaign if you miss the trophy in Chapter 7 or later in your trophy cleanup just load up Chapter 7 and get it that way. The last trophy of this kind involves Groot for the trophy Groot Canal. These beasts called Chargers appear in Chapter 10 and once again you need to answer the call to action on these beasts with Groot. For me it came quickly and randomly but I could see this trophy being a pain for others as Groot doesn't often answer these prompts unless he's the only one standing right beside the enemy. And these enemies only appear in chapter 10 so you, if you don't get the trophy, go back and get it during your trophy cleanup. Okay, one more combat related trophy, I promise. Most of this platinum run is dedicated to doing various combat related things and this is the last one that we got to cover. It's also a pretty annoying trophy. Set him up 
knock him down is obtained by landing the killing blow using a charged shot on an enemy that has been staggered 15 times. This one has many layers so let's peel them back. There are no trophies required for collecting all the workbench upgrades, but you will need to purchase the charge shot perk for this trophy. Then out on the battlefield, you will need to find enemies that can be staggered. You'll have to use those white circled abilities to stagger them, and then you need to fully charge the shot and it needs to land on the enemy and vaporize them. Oh, and do this 15 times. Inside of that process, a lot can go wrong as one of your teammates might land the killing blow or the stagger bar wears off before you land the killing charge shot. It is a demanding and hyper specific thing that you need to do just for this trophy. Plus, not every enemy is an eligible target as some enemies either don't have a stagger bar or they have a crap ton of health. Outside of going for this trophy, I never used charge shots once, so that should tell you how much they suck. Star-Lord in general isn't all that strong, so you really have to bring down their health before you make an attempt with the stagger and the charge shot. I would save this trophy for when you clean up and then run through the later chapters of the game where there are a ton of enemies that you can perform this. You'll know it when you get there. And with saying that, we have two more spoilerific trophies left to cover for this Platinum Trophy Guide. One I'm sure you have been waiting very patiently for. But before we start the final countdown on this Platinum Run, please hit the like button with your best shot because everybody wants to rule the world and this will upgrade my channel into the warrior and embolden it to don't fear the reaper aka the YouTube algorithm. Here we go and spoilers ahead here if you don't want to be spoiled. The first spoiler trophy happens right in the beginning section of the game so maybe it's not really a huge spoiler but I'm doing my due diligence here. I do it for you guys. It's called Eat it, Rodent, and Star-Lord and Rocket are participating in a friendly competition to see who can shoot the most parasite nests. They are scattered throughout the first level, and the bet starts when the scoreboard appears on your heads-up display. If you are not quick enough and not scanning the environment with your visor, Rocket will shoot them first. If you are finding yourself behind, don't worry, there's a ton of nests to blast when you get to the part of the chapter right here. It's that circular room with all the platforms, so use your visor to spot them and get them before Rocket does. If you have a higher score when you get to the cutscene with the Soul Stone, you will get the trophy. Okay, now it's time to get the trophy that everybody's been talking about. The one where you have to pay the fine and people have been missing the trophy, including yours truly. It's called Galactic Frugality, and it will be awarded to you if you successfully pay the Novacor fine in Chapter 9. As I mentioned, my first attempt at this went badly, so we are going to talk about the fine amount, how to get the money, and also how to make sure you hold on to that money till you get to Chapter 9. So the fine money itself is dependent on which thing you tried to hide in Groot's quarters in Chapter 2. Your fine will be 7,000 units if you decide to hide Kami the Llama and jettison the illegal tech into space, or if you choose the illegal tech instead, your fine will be 8,000 units. Now if you don't pick one of these options in time like I did, the game will keep both and the resulting fine amount will be a demoralizing 9,000 units. That's steep, so make the right decision here. Then the money comes from what you decide to do in Chapter 4 in the presence of Lady Hellbender. Whether you decide to choose Rocket as the monster to present to Lady Hellbender or decide on Groot, in both cases you will get enough units to pay off the fine. The story plays out a bit differently for each choice, but you'll still have enough money by the end of it. Now you absolutely need to resist the urge to spend it while you're visiting nowhere in Chapter 6. There is a lot to do while on this bustling planet. Lots of attractions, people to meet, and opportunities to get collectibles and other fun stuff. As I mentioned previously, certain items that will contribute to your collectible count can be purchased here using units you currently have, but make sure you don't overspend. 
this place is like a black market slash Vegas hybrid. So there are opportunities to make units here and get even more money. But there are just as many opportunities to get conned and swindled if you gamble or even if you meet the wrong people. These damn kids here pulled a fast one on me and just like that I didn't have enough money to pay the fine. So be careful through chapter 6 and make sure you always have enough money for the fine. And when you get to chapter 9 just hit the pay fine button on the console. Play through the story section and then turn in the units that will get you this infamous missable trophy and close out this platinum run. What a thrilling story and platinum run this game turned out to be. I'm very happy to have made this my 100th platinum and hope this guide gets you closer to finding your next platinum. This ragtag group and this excellent story makes the jump to hyperspace worth it. So if you've been hanging tough, holding out for a hero, rock rock till you drop and collected all the trophies, congratulations! You'll be awarded the this is what we do, Platinum Trophy for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Overall, getting the Platinum Trophy for Guardians of the Galaxy is a great time, especially if you love Marvel. It's got a super great narrative, and the way the game treats all its characters and lore is excellent. I already love the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, but I think this is the definitive iteration of the characters. The Platinum Run has a bit of jank to it with the collectibles and there's some annoying parts with the combat trophies and of course you can straight up miss paying the fine, but it's still a great trophy run. The accessibility of the custom difficulty is top notch and you can really augment the difficulty just the way you like it, which makes the Platinum Run so much better. As my 100th Plat and the start of Platinum Hunters 2022, this is the perfect Plat. I left a ton of games from 2021 in my backlog, but that's okay. There was just way too many games to realistically play, never mind going the distance and getting their platinum trophies. 2022 is looking like it's going to be even worse, especially with a ton of games being delayed due to the circumstances of the world. But Guardians of the Galaxy is one of those games you really need to play now. It's not perfect. It's got its rough edges, but it's the most surprising game of 2021. It's got heart, and it turned me loose and kickstarted my heart, and I'm running out of songs to use as puns. Anyways, play this game and get the plat. Do it. Everybody have fun tonight. Everybody wang chung tonight. Whatever that means. That's all for this video, and welcome to 2022. We are starting off with a bang, and the stuff I got planned for you guys, bruh, it's gonna blow your mind. Get ready for an awesome year of Platinum Trophy runs and trophy content. So you're gonna have to do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, because you're gonna wanna stick around for what's coming. And I hope all your trophy hunting expeditions this year go marvelously, and peace out.